Five years ago, when I first started seeing red light therapy devices designed to affect the brain, I thought it could potentially be a lot of BS. How could shining some red light on your scalp actually affect brain function? I don't recall any discussions about red light therapy in my medical school training or in my eight years in psychiatric residency training and service with the US Navy. But you know me, I'm always testing new things. So I said, hey, why don't I just give it a try and see what happens? So I tested one of the red light therapy helmets that was on the market that wasn't V-Light. And after trying it, I literally didn't feel any different after going through several protocols on the device. And I ended up just putting it on a shelf and forgetting about it. But then a few years later, I started to see all this peer reviewed research coming out of a company called V-Light, which was one of the red light devices that I hadn't tried. So I decided to give it a chance. And I'll tell you, the first time I tried a V-Light was the first time that I actually noticed noticeable differences in the state of my brain from red light stimulation. For example, the alpha setting made me feel really relaxed, whereas the gamma setting made me feel energized. So I was like, what's going on here? I definitely need to learn more about this. But still, I thought this was crazy. How could red light have a bunch of positive effects on the brain with low to no side effects and seemingly be completely overlooked by the medical community? Well, I think we're at actually an inflection point and a really important time when it comes to offering this type of treatment to people because it took a little while for the technology to get the right LEDs, wavelengths, pulsing protocols, and casing around the LEDs so that you can get directional light focusing to have a true effect on the brain. And the research is just now catching up. And this comes at a time where the general medical community is absolutely struggling to come up with solutions for things like dementia, concussions, traumatic brain injury, and various brain health disorders. Not to mention the pharmaceuticals and the host of side effects that come along with them. My suspicion is that red light therapy is going to sort of be a sneaker hit. It's really going to affect how people think and treat brain disorders and well accredited universities along with myself as a medical doctor are really catching up to the potential benefits of this treatment. In this video, I wanted to do an overview of all the research findings from over 12 peer reviewed studies published within the last five years that focus on V-Light and really take a look at what's going on and how this technology could potentially help you. And be sure to stick around to the end because I saved one of the most exciting and interesting studies to talk about in which red light therapy is actually used to increase creativity. For all those artists and entrepreneurs out there, I know you'd be super curious to hear about that one. So first of all, how does shining red light on your head actually affect your brain? Well, first of all, the light has to be strong enough and directed in a way that it can get through the skull and affect brain tissue below. Don't worry, it's not going to harm you. It's basically the same wavelengths that you get from sunlight. It just is pulsed in a certain way. V-Light has done a ton of work on the actual physics of how the red light is getting through your skull and affecting your brain below in both in-house and independent research studies that show that their near-infrared light devices emit sufficient irradiance and are focused in a particular way to actually stimulate brain tissue. This transcranial photobiomodulation consists of wavelengths generally in the 810 nanometer range, which balances depth perception along with things like mitochondrial absorption. They published a ton of data showing that their 810 nanometer light delivered at specific power densities can reach cortical layers at biologically relevant doses. Now that's not the case for other devices on the market, which have been shown to produce either insufficient irradiance or suboptimal light dispersion patterns that fail to penetrate to the skull effectively or deliver enough energy to actually modulate neural tissue. In contrast, V-Light has used EEG recordings, quantitative EEG analysis, and even fMRI scans to show that their near-infrared stimulation from their device actually 
actually results in increased alpha and gamma power, improved circuitry coherence, and changes in regional hemodynamic blood flow. Now earlier, we mentioned how the wavelength of light has been optimized to stimulate mitochondria, and that's where the initial practical benefits of this treatment start. Near-infrared light, like what's used in V-Light, penetrates through the scalp and the skull and stimulates cytochrome C oxidase, which is a key enzyme in your mitochondria, which is the powerhouse for your cells. A lot of research has been done to show that that wavelength of light actually stimulates mitochondria to increase their ATP production, which is the main energy currency within cells. So it gives your neurons more energy to do action potentials, repair themselves, and overall just to function better. And that really matters because as we age, energy production in the brain and neurons declines, and that is a major contributor to cognitive slowdown that happens with age. But that's only part of the story. And one of the things that really fascinated me about this technology is that in my lab here, I can't measure ATP production and mitochondrial function. That's just something that I'm not able to do in my little neuroscience lab here. But what I can do is measure changes in blood flow. And that's where the rubber really hit the road for me is that red light actually causes vasodilation. It stimulates nitric oxide release, which opens up these small arteries, veins, and lymphatic vessels in the brain. And what that means, and what is really exciting from a psychiatric standpoint, is that you get better blood flow in the brain, which means more oxygen and nutrients come in, and more waste and toxins get out of the brain, which is huge because your brain is so metabolically active. It is the most active organ in your body, and it's very vulnerable to the buildup of toxins, inflammation, and impaired drainage. So the more nutrients in and the more waste out can be extremely helpful for brain health overall. So what I was actually able to do in my little lab here is use the Muse Athena, which measures both brainwave activity and blood flow, and show that the V-Light was actually making in measurable increases in blood flow to the frontal lobe of my brain. So that got me really excited because I could see right in front of me that this device not only is making me feel different, but literally is changing the physiology of my brain right in front of me. And by increasing blood flow to my frontal lobe, I know that it's helping the area of my brain that's important for focus, decision-making, and executive function overall. That was the moment where I was like, okay, this isn't just like theory or papers, like this is actually doing something to my brain. And even further research made me even more excited to show that red light actually enhances the glymphatic system of your brain, which helps your brain clean out things like beta amyloid plaque and other debris related to dementia, especially during sleep. What's more is that there was a study showing microscopic evidence that the photobiomodulation modulation actually affects something called tubulin inside of neurons. Now, tubulin is scaffolding that keeps transport signals intact and maintains neuron integrity. And in animal models, the red light was shown to stabilize and enhance the microtubules, which would be another way that it helps support longevity in cognition and neuroplasticity. And longevity isn't just about warding off dementia, it's all about just keeping your brain sharp and your memory intact and your sense of self strong as we reach middle age and into our later years. I don't want to be at the point where I'm losing track of words, forgetting names, or slipping into cognitive fog, like that really like terrifies me. So just knowing that this red light is potentially preventing all that from happening as I reach middle age and into my later years is actually really comforting to me. And that's what's really being shown in these initial studies. Let's take a look at this mild cognitive impairment study that V-Light worked on. Now, mild cognitive impairment is the early stages of Alzheimer's dementia. You have some deficits that likely are leading to dementia down the road. In this peer-reviewed study, participants with mild cognitive impairment used the V-Light NeuroGamma device, which is the near-infrared light pulsed at 40 hertz every day for 20 minutes over several weeks. The results were really exciting. It wasn't like a huge dramatic effect size, but they were absolutely statistically significant improvements with improved executive function, better decision-making, better working memory, 
better planning, and on imaging studies, they found increased functional connectivity in the brain measured with resting state functional MRI. They even found increased thalamic volume, which is basically the relay station of the brain that regulates attention and consciousness. So not only are they showing improvements in performance, but they're also showing structural and functional changes to the test participants' brains. And what's really cool is this is like a consumer level device that was used at home that doesn't have basically any side effects. Now, another area of brain health would be something that a lot of us have dealt with in the past, which is either getting a concussion or hopefully not like a traumatic brain injury, but I know that there's a lot of you out there as well. This paper took a look at a pro hockey player. So this is a case report where the hockey player had six concussions and was dealing with constant headaches, anxiety, and cognitive fog. So they did eight weeks of home use of the V-Lite treatment and they found what really worked with him between the gamma and alpha settings. And at the end of the eight weeks, his brain scans showed increased gray matter volume, improved cerebral blood flow, better functional connectivity, and he demonstrated improvements on neuropsychological tests for memory and focus. Another study took a look at football players that were recovering from traumatic brain injury and showed that red light therapy not only improved their brain function, but it helped restore their neuromuscular control and balance, which if you think about it is a key marker of how well the brain is communicating with your body. So if you've ever had a fall or whiplash or played contact sports in your youth, you know those micro traumas can add up over time and affect brain function function and the red light seems to help the brain organize, repair, and rewire itself, sort of like a catalyst for change. So I'm thinking that red light might be one of these like tools that is just completely overlooked as a longevity training protocol. From a neuroscience perspective, if you look at the brainwave studies that V-Light did, it is extremely interesting. They did a double-blind EEG study where researchers used the V-Light NeuroGamma to deliver near-infrared light to the default mode network pulsed at 40 hertz to test subjects. And they also had a sham arm as well. And they found that just after one session, there were measurable increases in the higher frequency brain waves, alpha, beta, and gamma, and a suppression of slower bands like delta and theta. Now, why is that important? Well, if you think about the function of your brain and how it can operate on a high level to do focused attention, deep meditation, and get greater mental clarity in various situations, it's like the red light is just waking the brain up to be able to accomplish all that. It's almost like it's tuning it up into a more coherent, high-functioning brain state. They really geeked out on the science of this and used something called graph theory analysis to show that there was improved integration and efficiency across multiple different brain regions. So more evidence that if you struggle with things like mind wandering, mental fatigue, or getting into flow, Red light could help with that. I've been so impressed by these studies and using the device on myself and with clients that I've actually made it an integral part to my training program. I have my five day sharper everyday challenge where I walk you step by step how I use meditation, red light therapy, sleep and other biohacking protocols to help you be more focused, reduce anxiety. I really walk you step by step on how to use these devices in the right way because I know a lot of you have bought them but you're confused about what you actually do with them and don't want to end up like me with my first red light therapy device and just put them on the shelf and forget about them. So I want to help you with that. They're live group trainings and they're really fun. I'd love to see you there. If you're curious, take a look at the description where I have the five day challenge link and just take a look at what's offered in the program. And I will mention for our members that want to go even deeper, I am now doing mind lift quantitative EEG brain mapping to see the patterns of their brain and then design custom protocols using red light therapy to accelerate change in neurophysiology to increase brain performance. And if you're curious about that program, let me know as well. All right, let's get back to the study that I talked about at the beginning of this video for you artists, musicians, and entrepreneurs out there that are trying to become more creative so that you can reach your goals. This study honestly surprised me the most because it's not just about increasing your memory or changes in brain waves. It's actually looking at creativity. The researchers of this study wanted to know if a single 20 minute session of red light therapy targeted at the default mode network would boost creative thinking. And the short answer is that yes. In this 2023 peer reviewed study, they used the V-Lite NeuroGamma, the same headset that we've been talking about, and it tested participants before and after stimulation using two gold standard creativity assessments, the unusual uses task and the picture completion task. Now those 
tests measure something called divergent thinking, which is your brain's ability to think flexibly, generate novel ideas, and make unexpected connections between information. And just after one session, participants saw significant improvements in their fluency, which is the number of ideas they could come up with, flexibility, which is how many categories or types of ideas that they came up with, and originality, how unique and novel their ideas were. So this isn't just boosting your mood, it's actually creating a difference in your neural agility in real time. It makes me think about people that are middle-aged where creativity is on the decline and being able to stimulate that is important not only for projects, but it's also about problem solving, emotional intelligence, and just generally staying mentally agile, which I think are all key ingredients for thriving as we move forward towards middle-aged and retirement so that you can lead your family and start your new chapter. So I think that stimulating the default mode network in this way keeps your brain from getting rigid, you stop learning, or you're fatigued, or you're locked into stress loops. Like We want to prevent all that. And the fact that these sessions of red light are actually creating measurable boosts in these metrics is really impressive to me. I've not seen any supplement, nootropic, or other treatment that has effects like that. And for various other brain disorders, it's showing promising effects in emotional regulation, sleep. They did studies with military veterans that had PTSD, contact sport athletes, and they were able to show that the intranasal and transcranial devices led to meaningful improvements in sleep quality, mood and depression scores, chronic pain, and even core PTSD symptoms like hypervigilance and emotional detachment. So for those of you out there that are carrying long-term stress, trauma, or just generally feeling worn down by life, this is an at-home intervention that I'm you can tell I'm really passionate about. It might be one of the most overlooked tools that we have out there right now, but the, all the research is definitely catching up. So if you're serious about using this technology to sharpen your brain, I do have a discount code in the description below, but mostly what I would really like to do is work directly with you in the five day sharper everyday challenge or if you want to do the brain mapping with me and get an assessment and go through like the advanced program let me know if you're curious about that too and if you want to learn more about how i tested v-light on myself here in the lab with the muse headband check out this video here and i'll see you on the other side